Bishop Rene Henry Garcia is... Is he the most interesting man in the Catholic faith? I don't know about that. But he's a very interesting and intriguing character. And he was born on June 9th, 1923. He was ordained a priest on May 23rd, 1959. When he joined his religious order, he was required to choose a religious name that would be permanent, and so he chose René after René Grupel, a French Jesuit lay missionary. And he talks about his early days in his religious order. He said, I had been dispensed from my solemn vows as a Benedictine in 1961 because the Archabbot of St. Vincent Arch Abbey in Latrobe, Pennsylvania had wanted me out of the Arch Abbey in the order because I was an architect and did not approve of his building plans. The monastic chapter had voted down his project following my expression of disapproval in the chapter. I was promptly accepted by Archbishop Carroll as a priest in the Archdiocese of Miami. From there, uh, in 1969, Archbishop Carroll appointed Christina as the Chancellor of the Archdiocese of Miami while maintaining all of his other assignments. I guess recently he came out with a, a quote where he said, I was ordained in the old rite. And there's a little bit more on that here. Uh, he said, in 1969, the Concilium of the Second Vatican Council published a new edition of the Pontifical Romana. Since I was both the chairman of the Archdiocesan Litur Liturgy Commission and rector of the Archdiocesan Cathedral where the ordinations took place, I asked Archbishop Carroll if I should order a copy of the new Pontifical Romanum for use in the cathedral. The Archbishop replied that since there was some controversy about Monsignor Annabelle Bugnini, editor of the new Pontifical Romanum, in which he did not have much confidence, we would continue to use the old Pontifical Romanum already in use in St. Mary Cathedral for ordinations until a consensus developed in the church that the new Pontifical was free from error. Consequently, when I was appointed in December of 1971 Auxiliary Bishop to Archbishop Coleman Carroll by Pope Paul VI, I was still rector of St. Mary Cathedral. I therefore knew for certainty I was ordained Auxiliary Bishop of Miami on January 25, 1972 with an earlier edition of the Pontificum Romanum that was still in use in the Cathedral of St. Mary in Miami and not the 1969 edition of the Bugnini Pontifical. So this is hilarious uh, that the, our Bishop Gracita's bishop said, well, there's controversy about Bugnini's new rite, and so we're going to use the old rite for everything. So this bishop wasn't even sure if it was valid. So he, he used the old rite consecration, and consequently um, Bishop Gracita, as of the recording of this video, I believe he's 97 years old, and he was ordained in the old rite. He's one of the few remaining bishops to be ordained a bishop in the old rite. In 1971, he was appointed Auxiliary Bishop of Miami. Uh, he was appointed the Bishop of Diocese Pensacola, Tallahassee in 1975. And in 1983, he was appointed the Bishop of the Diocese of Corpus Christi, Texas, where he eventually retired. So uh, he also, Bishop Gracita has made a lot of interesting comments. In 2016, in an interview, Bishop Gracita said he now celebrates the extraordinary form exclusively because of the deficiency he has come to perceive in the ordinary form. And also some interesting information on Bishop Gracita. In 1985, he accused the Planned Parenthood Clinic in Rhode Island of procuring abortions, and in 1990, he accused two doctors of the same crime and banned them from entering the church. In 1994, Bishop Gracita issued an interdiction forbidding a Texas politician from receiving communion. So what would he say if he were participating in the USCCB conference? Actually, I don't know what his health situation is. He's very old. But I hope he sits in on this USCCB conference so he can weigh in on his opinion. I don't know if he will or not. But um, that would be great to have his input, because uh, the, the bishops emeritus, uh, however the plural version of that is, they can speak at the USCCB meetings, and some of them have, uh, including Cardinal Earl and Cardinal Mahoney. So Bishop Gracita certainly could give his input to the USCCB, and I'm sure that would be great, because he's excommunicated people. Uh, he says the Mass exclusively in the old right. And he's certainly an influence that most of our bishops would want. Also, uh, one of the significant things that he has done is in September of 2017, he signed a filial correction of Pope Francis. The 25-page letter accused the Pope of advocating seven heretical positions in the 2016 Apostolic Exhortation Amoris Laetitia. I believe he was the first bishop to sign this. He was having some doubts about this 
uh, Morris Letizia well before a lot of other people were, uh, well before it was a lot of, uh, on a lot of our radars. And fi the final interesting thing about him, a lot of people find him intriguing because there's a rumor going around that he thinks Benedict is Pope. Now, I saw a quote from him where he recently said that he does think Francis is Pope, so I think he was just questioning, and he was uh, commenting on the interesting, the intriguing scenario surrounding Benedict's resignation. Was it valid? Um, can he resign? But uh, in the end, Bishop Grisida does not think Benedict is still Pope, and so uh, I think that's where a lot of people have heard of his name before, associating him with one of the Benedict's Pope people, but he's not. But Bishop Grisida, may you live a long life, and um, I hope to hear more from him. He does have interesting comments on this Ad Orientum video. I'll try to link it below if I remember. And this video is talking about Ad Orientum liturgy. Now, obviously, that's just the Novus Ordo because the Latin Mass is exclusively Ad Orientum. But it's, it's actually a really great video, and Bishop Grisida was one of the, the priests speaking in this video. They commented on their experience with Ad Orientum liturgy. So Bishop Christine is on the right side of a lot of things, and I hope to look more into his background. Um, he's one of the, what, the titans of tradition, you could say, and I, I certainly hope that, uh, that we hear a lot more from him in the coming years.